Welcome to this edition of U Central News. I'm Anthony Mellendorf. And I'm Hannah Baker. Today we start our team coverage over the alignment and allocation forum that was held earlier today. That's right, Hannah. I had a chance to stop by this morning and I can tell you it was a packed house. The University of Central Oklahoma held an allocation and realignment forum in Constitutional Hall today. One by one, people began filing in to learn how the university is planning to tackle the recent financial challenges they have been facing. One of my responsibilities today is going to be to talk to you a little bit about developing a mechanism that we hope in the end, I know in the end, will be a rational and fair means of figuring out how it is that we're going to deal with a whole lot of expenses that we have on a university campus. Um, but to use those expenses in a manner that's fair and equitable for everybody on the campus. One of the main discussion points was the creation of a task force that will help address the financial issues the university is facing. A task force of your peers will work together this year to define a planning tool that reflects the voice of the campus community and empowers our leaders to respond nimbly to opportunities and threats in the education industry and in our state. After around 30 minutes of discussion, the floor was opened up for questions from the crowd. One of the questions asked is how the university plans to address the compensation gap and provide equal pay for staff and faculty alike. I see quality talent leave my areas. I see people who can't make ends meet because they haven't had any increases in compensation. And I'm curious as to how the task force will address that fact as well. And it's not just staff, it's faculty, but faculty have recently received an increase. Staff have not. And so as an advocate for those folks that work for me, I feel it's important that we continue to talk about that. We know about mandatory cost increases for the institution, there are mandatory cost increases for us as individuals as well. Mm -hmm. After the forum, President Newhold Ravi Kumar said she was happy with the turnout. I was exceptionally pleased with the turnout. We had almost a, a full house, very few empty seats in the Constitution Hall. Um, had several people standing in the back, so I'm glad that we have an engaged community. Said Governor Stitt understands that higher education plays a vital role in making Oklahoma a top 10 state. Um, education is a key part of that, and he recognizes that. Uh, I believe that efforts like what we're doing right now, the allocation, the alignment and allocation effort, are exactly what he would want us to do. And said today was the start of a great opportunity for the university moving forward. I believe that we are a, a campus family and community that are resolute in supporting each other and getting through this together. Um, and this is an opportunity for us to plan. You know, this is not a traumatic event. This is an opportunity for us. From Edmond, Oklahoma, Anthony Mellendorf. U Central News. And while budget cuts were mentioned at the forum today, there were no specifics on when and where we can expect those cuts moving forward. And also at the forum today, enrollment was mentioned as one of the factors in the deficit in UCO's budget. Enrollment has decreased along with their university's revenue. U Central's Selena Luna has more on the story. There have been major education budget cuts in the state of Oklahoma, and it's starting to show here at UCO. Over the last five years, there has been a significant decrease in student enrollment. Enrollment for undergrads has decreased by almost 12% and grad students by 19%. An increase in enrollment may not be seen soon since UCO is no longer considered an affordable university in Oklahoma due to the increase in tuition costs. A few students here at UCO shared their opinion on the decrease of student enrollment. It worries me, I mean, specifically because I'm an education major, so it's very important to me that people come and further their education. You know, we want everyone to be coming to school here, so fewer people, you know, you're not having as much involvement as much, or as many individuals at your campus, so I can see the good and the bad in that. With these budget cuts, student credit hour production would not increase, meaning less revenue for the university. President Newhold is preparing the university for the fiscal year of 2021 and hasn't proposed any plans to increase student enrollment. At the University of Central Oklahoma, Selena Luna, U Central News. And we will continue to update you on the UCO budget as we get more information. Work is now underway to make a dangerous Edmond intersection safer. State Highway 74 and Waterloo Road will be narrowed down to one lane while crews install new traffic lights. There have been multiple wrecks at this intersection and some of them even deadly. Construction is expected to last through early November. 
Once the project is complete, the intersection will be a four-way stop with full traffic signals for all directions. And starting November 1st, driving under the influence laws are going to be seeing some changes. Starting next month, people arrested on suspicion of DUI would go directly to district court to appeal. They will also have the option to be in the Impaired Driver Accountability Program, having 45 days to install an interlock system in their vehicle. Drivers will also be getting their licenses back and won't have the DUI arrest show on their record as long as they go 180 days without any further violations. There will also not be any reinstatement fees applied. And this morning, Dick's Sporting Goods has destroyed $5 million worth of their gun inventory. This decision comes after it was learned that the store had sold the Parkland shooter a shotgun. Dick's CEO, Ed Stack, decided not to sell firearms to anyone under 21 and that it will destroy its inventory of weapons rather than give them to another retailer. Stack is a gun owner himself, but he could not stand being part of the narrative of mass shootings. And the Supreme Court is now debating whether a landmark civil rights law protects LGBT people from discrimination in employment. Today, Supreme Court judges heard arguments in favor of including sexual orientation and gender identity to Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Title VII prohibits discrimination in the workplace on the basis of sex, along with other categories. The question Supreme Justices are now facing is whether or not Title VII should apply to those who are discriminated against due to being gay or transgender. A ruling for employees who were fired because of their sexual orientation would have a huge impact for the estimated 8 million LGBT workers across the country. A decision on the case is expected by the summer of 2020. And on a lighter note, it's finally starting to feel like fall. That's right. It was so chilly this morning I had to break out the jacket. Really? That's right. Hey, Micah, what's it looking like out there right now? Oklahoma City, 75. Let's try and take another look at that after this break. We apologize for the technical difficulties that we're having right now. Hafer Park has a new playground for children and adults alike. The new Tots playground opened up on the lower park near Hafer Park stage. This playground replaces the old one, allowing a safer space for the kids too small for the other play sets. Benches in the surrounding landscapes are still being finished, but the playground is open for use. It's intended for children's ages 2 through 5, but the soft turf allows for toddlers of crawling age to explore the outdoors. The highlight of the new playground is the new swing. This is Edmund's first parent-child swing, allowing an adult to swing with the child swinging in front of them. The playground features three slides, a log balance beam, a hollow tree that children can crawl through, and much more. And you might be surprised at the number of college students who go hungry. U Central's Michaela Navinsky has more on the story. Thanks, guys. I'm here at Central Pantry, which is located in room 203 on the second floor of the Nye University Center. Across the United States, many students experience food insecurity. This pantry is one of the ways the University of Central Oklahoma is trying to make sure their students get enough to eat. Everyone knows the typical college student stereotype. Students generally survive off of ramen like and free story. meals and tend to skip meals because they can't afford it. Over the years, food insecurity in college students has been on the rise. With expenses like tuition, rent, and gas, many students cut their costs by skipping meals entirely or by purchasing cheap food with no nutritional value. You know, I remember specifically in my undergrad, like, my meal plan couldn't really cover everything sufficiently or, you know, when I didn't have a meal plan, um, I, you know, food was a big issue. The University of Central Oklahoma has recognized food insecurity as an issue amongst its community. And to combat this issue, Central Pantry was opened in 2012. Central Pantry is located in the Nye University Center and is a free choice model pantry meaning students can choose the food they want to take home, just like shopping in a grocery store. And if you're in need, we're going to help you. If you're a faculty, staff, or student, or someone who works at UCO, we're going to help you. Um, so 
we don't really turn people away. This semester, around 600 students, faculty, and staff are registered to use Central Pantry. Those who wish to register can apply on Org Central. Central Pantry is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The pantry is always accepting donations of non-perishable food items. The Central Pantry also holds themed food drives throughout the year, so be on the lookout for those. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Michaela. And tomorrow night, Broncos can catch a flick for free. UCO Student Programming Board is hosting their midweek movies event, where the first 50 people will get in for free. You may want to get there early, though, because the first 10 people who show up will also get free popcorn. Midweek movies start at 6 Wednesday at the Hickingbird Cinemas. And what's your major? That's a question most college students will hear at least once or twice while in school. And for those of us who haven't chosen a major or might be looking to switch, UCO is hosting their Major Quest event. Tomorrow morning, students can explore the many majors as well as minors the university has to offer. Academic advisors as well as career development professionals will be around to answer all of your questions. And major quests will last from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Nye University Center Ballroom. And if you're worried about missing lunch, free food will be provided for those who attend. That's awesome. And when we come back, we're going to get our full forecast with Micah. Stay with us. Sometimes, the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, Such a weirdo. excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Hi, and welcome back, Broncos. As Anthony said earlier, it is feeling nice. We got those fall temperatures. It is bright, sunny, feels amazing. It's 75 degrees right now. If you woke up yesterday um, and today, you know, you may have had a sweater on today, but of course, with the afternoon, that has changed. As we look at temperatures right now across the state, we see that it's 70s everywhere except for Godman. They're at 80 degrees, so they're still feeling pretty warm. They haven't got the memo that it fall, but 70s all across the state feeling mighty, mighty nice. So some of your weather headlines to get to later in this forecast is your next chance of thunderstorms and we have a cold front coming in beginning on Wednesday. So I'll give you the timeline of that and talk about when we will have a significant decrease, a drop in temperatures. So get ready for that. But as we talk about for tonight, 57 degrees, definitely hoodie, sweats. You want to put on, you know, a light jacket, want to feel nice. You know, is winds going to be coming out of the south, southeast at 14 miles per hour. It will feel like 55. We will have some Clouds, you know, coming around throughout the evening. Tonight across the state, we see 50s everywhere. From Guyman at 56 to Oklahoma City at 57, McAllister 55, Miami 51, and then Idabel down there at 49. So 
finally. Oklahoma weather is all on the same page across the state, you know, with 50s everywhere for tonight and then right now 70s all across the board. So as we look at your day planner, in the morning we do have a chance to rain if you have early morning classes. It won't last until about 10 a.m. That's when those rain chances will uh, decrease, but it will be 59 degrees if you're, you know, on your way to campus, you know, making the drive will be mighty cloudy. And then as we go into noon, lunchtime, it will be 70, deg 70 degrees. We'll feel like 70. You know, again, we have those clouds sticking with us, but the rain chance goes away, thankfully. And then tomorrow, 4.30 newscast time will be 79 degrees, still sticking with those clouds. The winds will be coming out of the south, southeast at 19 miles per hour. So it's going to feel like a pretty nice day, pretty much like today, just kind of cloudy. You know, we had those cold temperatures in the morning and then in the evening, it starts to feel pretty nice. And then as we look at tomorrow across the state. We see uh, 70s, 80s, we see Diamond 88 degrees, Altus 89, and then Oklahoma City 79. And then as we take a look at Eastern Oklahoma, we see McAllister at 80, Tulsa at 76, and then Ida Bell at 79. So we have some warmer temperatures up to the Northwest, you know, Diamond with the 88, and then cooler down there. But again, I told you we have that cold front coming in beginning on Wednesday. So um, you see temperature differences. Oklahoma City 25, Guyman 35 because that cold front is going to make a big difference in the temperatures. And then I want to give you to the timeline of the cold front. So it will begin kind of in northwestern Oklahoma at uh, 7 a.m. And then around Oklahoma City at 1 p.m. So that's when you have to worry about that. And then 4 p.m. But coming up, I will give you my full seven-day forecast so you can see what to expect. For now, back to you all at the desk. Thanks, Micah. I'm looking forward to that seven-day forecast. And when we come back, we'll see what's trending on social media with Brooke. That's right, so stay tuned. A new and innovative graduate degree is now here at the University of Central Oklahoma. I am one of the first to explore it. It's called the Professional Science Masters, or PSM. The computational program helps math, science, and engineering students find their edge, combine graduate courses in a STEM field with MBA classes gain skills that are cutting edge and relevant. The program is flexible and convenient with locations downtown Oklahoma City and Edmond. Connect to Central, advance your career with the Professional Science Masters. Ride on a wave or climb above trees. See something new in the land of no boundaries. In a state with the most diverse terrain, it's all fun and games. Plan it all at travelok.com. Come see for yourself where you've never gone. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. Love it. Cross-referencing travel sites. And booking all your flights with those... Vouchers. I got us bumped. They were like, oh, But now they're like... <laughs> Aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Your son wants to get a cat, but you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers, but that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back to Youth Central News. I'm Brooke Dykus here for your social media update. Let's take a look and see what's trending and happening on social media. Apple has said goodbye to iTunes. With Mac's new Catalina update, Apple has moved each iTunes service into certain separate apps. The three apps are Apple Music, Apple TV, and Podcast. This is all to replace the revolutionary iTunes. Apple first launched iTunes in 2003, two years after the debut of Apple's iPod. Spotify and Apple Music are the main contenders of the reason for the end of the iTunes. Users will not be able to see iTunes Store unless restored under user settings. One photo that's been getting a lot of media attention and trending is a picture of host Ellen DeGeneres with former President George W. Bush at the Dallas Cowboys game this past Sunday. Ellen addressed the photo saying the two are friends. Many people took to Twitter slamming Ellen for the fact of the different political views between the two. 
Ellen addressed on her sh show earlier this week, just because I don't agree with someone on everything doesn't mean I'm not going to be friends with them. When I say be kind to one another, I don't mean only people who think the same way that you do. I mean be kind to everyone. Well, Adidas has released a new sneaker collection for those who want to move more easily from the lawn to the streets. The sports manufacturer's new line caters to customers who do many activities in the lawn. This new line wants customers to have the same shoes to work in the lawn and to take to the streets. This new garden, gardening club collection drops on October 12th and it will have a range of apparel, accessories, and footwear. Well, that's all the trending topics I have for you today. Make sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss out on anything U Central news. Give us a follow on Twitter at U Central Media and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash U Central. Have a great day, Broncos. And now back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Brooke. I'm looking forward to mowing my lawn in those Adidas shoes. Oh, gosh. When we get back, we'll see what's going on in sports with Bryce. So stick with us. achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision... Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah! Invent... Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. In the land of wonder and awe, you won't believe you see what you saw. Where there's something to do for young and for old, where stories are written and then they're retold. Visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play. Good afternoon, Bronco fans. Welcome to U-Central Sports. I'm your host, Bryce McKinnis. And today we don't have a lot slated for UCO Athletics, but we do have great news from our highly competitive women's tennis team. Today, they're celebrating an impressive regional showing yesterday in Oklahoma City as junior Paola Landon and sophomore Nikki Boyer qualified for the national finals after going 5-0 and winning the regional championship. Head coach Jaron Maestas said, I'm so proud of those two for all of their hard work and their efforts this weekend. This is a very tough field and a very tough tournament. They worked really hard and deserve this. The national finals will take place in Rome, Georgia on October 17th through the 20th. Landon and Boyer are among eight finalists who will compete for the Intercollegiate Tennis Association Cup. Landon and Boyer will prepare for the cup while the rest of the UCO tennis squad competes at Oral Roberts on Friday and Saturday. And today, both UCO golf teams are in competition as we speak, actually, the ladies are competing, competing excuse me, at the Midwest Classic in Warrensburg, Missouri, while the men are in the Holiday Inn Express Classic in St. Joseph, Missouri. After the first day, the women's team is in third place behind the team from Tahlequah and Missouri Western, and the men's team is in fourth place behind Central Missouri, Winona State, and Washburn. Both teams open their final rounds of play today at 8 a.m. And in national sports news, the Cleveland Browns lost to the San Francisco 49ers last night, 31-3 on Monday Night Football. But the final score was not the subject of speculation for many this morning, 
Instead, we chose to talk about the pregame handshake between the captains because why not? 49ers defensive back accused current Browns and former Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield of refusing to shake his hand before the game. But this video from ESPN reporter Jake Trotter reveals that perhaps it was Richard Sherman who snubbed Baker of the handshake, or maybe they did, in fact, shake hands. It's hard to tell, but Sherman received a lot of heat afterwards on Twitter and on various talk shows. But former NFL punter Pat McAfee extended an offer for Sherman to defend himself on McAfee's show tomorrow. They shared this exchange on Twitter, and Sherman accepted the offer. He's expected to talk at 7.05 tomorrow morning, so make sure you have your popcorn ready for that one, folks. Bronco fans, have a great day. Make sure to go support your UCO Athletics this week, and tune in tomorrow at 4.45 to hear back from Logan and be back here at the same time on Thursday for a weekend preview from yours truly. Anthony, back to you. Thanks, Bryce. I'm really looking forward to that update on that scandal. And when we get back, we'll get a last look at weather. Whomever you want to be, wherever you want to go, UCO's College of Business can help get you there. Our degree programs and dedicated faculty will help you gain the knowledge and skills you need to connect to the future of business. Because of UCO's College of Business, I've been able to be successful in business and in leadership. They take that time for situational things to prepare you and give you the tools, essential needs, and skill sets that's going to set you up for success in the future. Hey, you could be in life is what we've made Oklahoma City with a spirit that says go for it you know you one of the oldest institutions of higher learning in Oklahoma. We are teaching tomorrow's leaders. We are champions. We're the first forensic science program of its kind in the state. We are making school rock. We are the leaders on campus today and in our communities tomorrow. We are reaching new heights in the fine arts. We are tomorrow's business innovators. We are learning to prevent illness and promote health in our community. We are all this and more. We are Central. Welcome back to U Central News. Hey, Micah, let's get that last look at weather. Yeah, let's do it. So tonight it will be 57 degrees, and then we have a roller coaster of temperatures. It will be 81 uh, tomorrow, and we got a chance to rain. And then in the 60s on Saturday, and then back to the 70s by Sunday and Monday. 56 on Friday? Yes. That's going to be pretty cold. I know. That cold front <laughs> that's coming through is going to be a 25-degree uh, temperature difference. Wow. That's crazy. So we mentioned that there was a scarecrow contest going on in Edmond, and they have actually yes. picked the winners for that contest. Well, who is it? So the Tin Man is the one who actually <laughs> won. Not Superman, not Dwight, but <laughs> the Tin Man oh, right I there. So there, that was your people's choice, the Tasmanian Devil right there, and then, of course, uh, first place right there. That actually looks like Dorothy. Uh, from the Wizard of Oz? Yeah, well, Wizard of Oz, same same thing. You know, I think okay. the Tasmanian Devil would have had my vote. Yes, <laughs> people's choice, obviously. So We're the people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as you can see, second place there, Superman, and for uh, third place, Dwight. We mentioned Superman and Dwight. So, yeah, we showed you those last week. But, yeah, that's the Scarecrow Contest. Thank you so much for tuning into this edition <laughs> of U Central News. Make sure to add us on Twitter at U Central Media and on Facebook at U Central. Have a great night, Edmund.